What is up and welcome back to the vlog. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to service your KO KT250 as well as give some general service tips. So stick around. Take a second to check out our merch store. We've got Indira t-shirts, our own motocross jerseys, winter wear, headwear, pit viper shades, and loads more accessories. We have also got a custom branding catalog on our website if you want custom branding solutions for your business. All right, for the guys that don't know, this is my Chinese made KO KT250. Great bikes, 224cc. It's got Honda suspension and linkage and all that good stuff, similar to a KTM's frame. Great little dirt bike. Uh, we have been using and abusing this thing. It's currently got 27.2 hours on it and uh, it's been running like a champ and taking all the abuse but recently we've done a cross-country race uh, some enduro training and a couple of hard enduro rides and it obviously is in need of a wash and it is due for a service actually overdue for a service so before we jump into the actual service portion of this video there's nothing that i hate more than working on a filthy dirt bike so we are going to be giving this thing a good wash and uh, to get access to everything uh, and to clean everything where we need to work we are going to be removing the seats the radiator shrouds the fuel tank and uh, in my case the uh, exhaust guard over here what do you need to service your KOKT 250 first off a Phillips screwdriver to remove the radiator shrouds a small ratcheting wrench with a 10 millimeter and an 8 millimeter socket uh, to remove your seat and fuel tank a 12 millimeter socket along with a large ratcheting wrench to remove the drain plug for the oil and for the spark plug uh, if you don't have a spanner you need a 21 millimeter deep socket uh, it obviously depends on what spark plug you're running uh, the OEM spark plug uh, takes a smaller socket. I'm running a NGK brand spark plug so that takes a 21 millimeter. You need some oil for the transmission. Now this is Silk Silkeline's 10W40. You don't need to run gear oil as long as it is API JSO MA2 rated for wet clutch systems you can run this in your bike because the motor is based on a Yamaha WR200 motor, uh, we are going with the 10W40, which is the Japanese spec oil. You need air filter oil to coat your air filter after you clean it, and then any type of solvent in a bucket to clean your air filter. We are going to be using paraffin, uh, which is actually the same as most air filter cleaners. So get a nice uh, big bucket pour your uh, solvent in there and clean your air filter in that. Then we'll rinse it out and when it's dry, we'll coat it with the uh, air filter oil. Now, I'm obviously not a professional mechanic. I just wrench on my own dirt bikes and I do not claim to know everything, but this is in general, uh, something you can apply to any dirt bike service. Uh, Cause I mean, it's the same thing regardless of the brand clean your bike, clean your filter, change the spark plug, uh, drain the oil and put fresh oil in it. Now that's obviously for two strokes, for four strokes, it's pretty much the same as well. Um, but yeah, so I hope this video could help you guys out and uh, yeah, let's jump into the actual work. Now that we've got the tank and shrouds and the bash plates off, now we've got good access to everything. So the first little tip is uh, how not to get water into your fuel system. I'll just take a little zip tie, loop it around. You could potentially just put a screw in here with a uh, little hose clamp. This is probably gonna be tricky to do with one hand. Just fold the hose over and put a little zip tie over it and 
by pinching it here, it'll create a seal and nothing should go in there. Uh, another tip is the air filter. Now you do get specific air box covers or intake covers uh, that you put in when you want to clean out your air box. Uh, what I usually do is I remove the air filter and I put that in the solvent to start uh, loosening up the old air filter oil, oil and dirt. And what I do is I take a bunch of shop rags and some plastic bags and I just shove it into the intake boot and that prevents any dirt from going in. So there's an official way to do it and a cheap DIY way to do it. I don't have the intake cover, so I just do the shop rags and plastic bags thing. You don't, if water gets into your carburetor, uh, then you just gotta remove it, drain the fuel bowl, clean the carb out. So obviously you wanna avoid doing that. Uh, if possible, uh, the throttle blade is shut, so water should not go into the motor, but we're gonna remove the air filter right now and then we'll stuff some rags we basically fill up the uh, intake boot in there and we fill up this whole cavity uh, so water does not get in and then afterwards we'll just wipe out all the little dirt and debris that goes in there Another quick tip, when you disassemble your bike, if you can't bag and tag the hardware, which is the recommended way, uh, you can always just reinstall all the screws in the threaded inserts where they belong. So for the tank, we've got all the little screws in there. Same thing for the bolts and the seat. And then the bolt for the tank and the screws that hold on the radiator shrouds to the rea to the radiators. All right, now that the bike is clean, torn down, uh, we got it off the stand and we about to drain the oil. Now, ideally, it would work better if you run the bike to get it up to operating temperature. Uh, that'll make the oil a bit thinner and it'll drain out easier, but it's my time at the moment and I'm not in a rush. So we are just going to pull out the drain plug and drain the oil normally. Um, the drain plug sits underneath the casing of here. I had to cut my carbon fiber cover because this is glued on. Wise choice. Uh, anyways, let's uh, loosen it up and get uh, the oil out. This bolt is insanely long. Spilling oil on the ground already. Now, the purpose of using uh, this cut open container instead of my main uh, oil drain pan is I want to be able to let the oil settle and inspect it and see if there's any metal shavings or uh, excessive clutch wear. So uh, it's a good indicator on the, to figure out the overall health of your engine. And uh, now just kind of lift the bike upright so it can drain out. Looks, uh, Kind of normal, bit of clutch material. As I said, this did a full cross country race and uh, two hard enduro rides on this oil. So, uh, obviously, if you get the oil uh, up to a high temperature, it degrades. And uh, if you do hard enduro stuff, the uh, clutch tends to get pretty hot. In the oil draining process, sometimes leaving the bike on its stand and leaving the bike upright is not enough. You really want to drain as much of the old fluid out as what you can. So sometimes you just have to kind of tilt the bike over a bit and lean it over for a while so some of the excess oil can get out. Upon inspection, the oil 
does look pretty fine. You guys probably won't be able to see anything in the light. There's some, uh, some clutch material in there, which is expected with the hard enduro riding because you're constantly riding the clutch. Doesn't smell too badly burnt. Um, yeah, for what we did with the bike, the oil is looking pretty good. Now we've got our drain plug cleaned off and uh, it's got a copper washer. Um, if your copper washer is looking like it's deformed or if it's kind of squished out very far, uh, you definitely want to replace this. This one has only been out like once or twice. Uh, it's got no deformation on it, so I'm just going to send it with this. So you just pop it back in there and use your 14 mil socket. Um, there is obviously a specific torque rating for each bolt on this bike, but general rule of thumb for me, um, you kind of tighten it a bit and then you grab it close to the head of the ratcheting wrench and then you just tighten it until you can feel it's got a lot of tension and you ease off your grip. Um, the further out you hold it, the more leverage you have, the more torque you're gonna put on it. If you put it up here, you will not strip it because you'll feel when it gets too tight. KOK okay, okay, T250 takes 800 milliliters, uh, so let's fill it up. After filling, wipe off any excess spillage, just uh, to avoid tons of dirt clinging to the oil, and then replace your filler plug or full cap. Another quick tip, uh, while everything is blown apart and you have good access, you might as well check your fluid levels. And uh, with the radiator, you don't want it to be all the way full. You want to be able to see the tops of the fins. So that is perfect. I actually had an issue with this bike uh, where this radiator hose had a little slit at the back or the all radiator hose, I replaced it obviously, but the hose had a little slit at the back and it was slowly seeping coolant. And in the first like 15 hours of use, all the coolant seeped out. It was so little that I didn't notice this, that the coolant was gone and I did not check my fluid levels before every ride and the bike heat seized eventually when there was no coolant in the system anymore. So, cheap insurance, Check your coolant before every ride. With the oil done, we can move on to the spark plug. So once again, with the tank and the shrouds and everything pulled off, you have tons of access. Um, but on the KT250 specifically, you have to remove the tank to do the spark plug or, well, it'll make your life a hell of a lot easier. And you also need to remove this power valve servo. So this is what opens and closes the power valve. To remove the servo, you need a number six Allen socket or, or Allen wrench. Uh, yeah, and once this is out of the way, then we can gain access or proper access to the spark plug. Alrighty. And with that loosened up, we can just let it hang out of the way there. You can disconnect the plug if you want. We're gonna go ahead and do it just so we can get as much access as possible and there's nothing hooking onto uh, our wrenches and getting in the way. Sometimes more work is less work. Take that extra component off to make the job that you need to do that much easier. If you have a 21 millimeter wrench, it would work a bit better. Uh, I don't have that. I only have this deep 21 millimeter socket. So I slide the socket on there and then I snake in and pop in my ratcheting wrench. You just loosen it up. You really just need the wrench to initially loosen the uh, spark plug and then it should be able to come out by hand. Not too bad. Uh, it's not wet, so that's a good thing. 
I'm a no expert at uh, reading plugs, but uh, yeah, that looks uh, pretty decent. It's not overly gray and uh, it's not white, so that means it did not get hot enough to burn the plug. Uh, these plugs, these NGK uh, BR7 ES plugs come gapped correctly for this bike straight out of the, out of the box. I checked them anyways. But now these spark plugs have this crash washer. Uh, once again, there is a specific torque rating for tightening down these, but I usually turn it. You can feel when the uh, this crash washer kind of flattens out. It almost feels like it's stripping, but it's gradual and then it gets tighter again. Uh, so yeah, I've gotten a feel for it over time, but uh, you can always refer to the factory manual for the torque rating. It's getting tighter, a little bit tighter. And there we go. Replace your plug wire. Make sure that clicks on nicely. Otherwise, it's not going to make contact and you will have bad ignition. Uh, connect your plugs up again if you remove them and uh, reinstall the power valve servo. With the oil change and the spark plug change done, uh, I'm going to throw the tank and the radiator shrouds and the seat back on because we are essentially finished with the bulk of the service. The last task we have left is to clean out the air box and remove the plastic bags, clean the air filter in the solvent, rinse it out, re-oil it and then we'll throw it back into the bike. Another tip specifically for the KOKT250 is these uh, screws that hold in or hold on the radiator shrouds. They are very prone to rusting. So I just added a little bit of copper grease on them so you can still tighten up the radiators or the shrouds and it does not rust and seize inside this uh, threaded insert. The last step is to clean the air filter. So all you need is a bucket and uh, your air filter cleaner or just normal paraffin, another cheaper hack. It's the same thing as most of the air filter cleaners and it's much cheaper. So we're gonna dump the paraffin in the bucket, take the air filter off the cage and soak it in and uh, kind of work out all of the air filter work. So dump the paraffin in the bucket. And this stuff you can reuse probably like, maybe like six or seven times. So uh, it actually lasts quite long. Gloves, if you want. Pop off the air filter. And just stick it in there. As you can see, it's immediately pulling dirt out. Now you can leave it to soak for a while and you can just uh, work out the dirt every now and then. You're also going to want a bucket of water, of clean water, just to rinse out the filter a couple of times. All right, with the air filter clean, uh, it's worth noting that uh, sometimes uh, you don't get all of the dirt out on the first soak in the uh, paraffin. So sometimes you gotta, you know, put it in there, work it around a little bit, let, let it soak in, and then you do a rinse cycle and you kind of see uh, how much debris you got out. And uh, then you can soak it again. I had to soak it twice. And what I also do after soaking it in the paraffin and rinsing it out, I take some uh, normal uh, detergent, anything like a dishwashing liquid or um, you know just a normal general purpose degreaser and I kind of soak the air filter in that and I work it in a bit and then I'll rinse it out again and uh, yeah it gives you a pretty decent result definitely clean enough for me we are going to leave this to dry overnight and then we'll hit it with our air filter oil 
Okay, with the air filter completely dry, uh, it's time to oil it up. So when it comes to air filter oiling methods, uh, you've got two options. First off, you can get uh, the oil in a container like this. Um, it's pretty much liquid. Uh, you pour it into a bucket, you soak the air filter in the oil, and you wring out the excess. Or another option is going with the aerosol uh, application. Um, you just liberally coat the air filter with the oil and you massage it in with gloves if you want to. So uh, in our case today, I don't have another bucket to pour this oil in. I'm gonna go with the aerosol method. Gloves if you want to once again. And then spraying down the air filter. Now that it's got a bit of a coating on there, we can go through and just massage it in. Fair air filters can tear, so be careful not to wring them too hard. Uh, I just try to kind of massage it in. And depending on riding conditions, um, usually I clean air filters every one or two rides. Uh, if it's fairly wet conditions and uh, the air filter still looks clean uh, after a ride, then I'll let it fly for two rides. But usually I clean the filters after every ride. Fly a bit more oil. Now with the air filter oiled up and the oil spread evenly, we can throw it back onto the air filter cage, put on some grease for uh, extra sealing power, and then throw it back in the bike. So for those of you who don't know, this is an old school trick. You take some grease and you apply it on the rim of the air filter, and that helps it seal a lot better on the air filter boot. Take some grease and apply a generous amount. Once again, cheap insurance. You don't want dirt getting past your filter. And with that done, we can install the air filter back in. Make sure that you removed all the rags and plastic bags that you had stuffed in here previously if you don't have one of the air box covers and make sure that you wiped out the uh, air box thoroughly because uh, there'll be dirt and dust and debris that'll go and sit in all of the little nooks and crannies. Once again, you want it as clean as possible to uh, make your motor live as long as possible. Pop in the top bulb and then slide the uh, rubber mount over the outer bulb. Um, what I usually do then is I just run my hand across to feel if it's seated properly everywhere and kind of tuck in the air filter where it's peeling out. With the air filter installation done, that concludes the service on the KOK T250. Now, most of the methods we used here can be implemented on any dirt bike, but obviously this video was specific to the KOK T250. We don't have the front forks back yet, so we uh, won't be riding this bike this weekend. Um, but another cool thing that I've got for the bike, um, if you do hard enduro or woods riding or single track riding, um, you know that there's a big possibility of bending the selector shaft when hitting a stump or rock. So Otom Racing made this cool billet brace that braces the uh, selector shaft with a little uh, captured bearing over here. And they also make a bit beefier um, gear shifter. So uh, yeah, definitely worth getting if you do single track wood riding or hard enduro with your KOK T250. I'll put the link to this product in the description. 
in the next video, if you guys would like to join us, we are going to get the exhaust for the KDX 250. These pipes are very, very heavy. They've got thick fiberglass baffling sandwiched in between two steel layers. So over here, we already cut the one inner steel layer out and removed the baffling. This uh, will probably cut the weight of the exhaust by half and uh, according to the old school two stroke guys this will make the exhaust flow much better and have much better resonance for the exhaust pulses and uh, it's also got like 30 years of carbon build up so join us for that next week the kdx also has some other issues could be low compression bad read valves or the timing is a bit out uh, so we're going to check over all that stuff in the next video. So if you guys got any value from this video or you are keen to follow along on the other projects, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Peace out and keep ripping.